My wild clay adventure continues. This is the clay that I dug in my last video and it's been sitting for a couple of days. It's been getting stirred and all those particles nice and hydrated and now I'm ready to strain it off and for the first time and get some of those chunky bits out. Part of figuring all this out is deciding on what sort of screen or mesh to use for straining out these bits and right now I'm using a, a bag that's a 250 micron or 60 mesh strainer and you know it's it might be a little too fine so I'm going to stir up the clay a bit and get all the nice chunks and everything get it all stirred up well and use my spiffy new paddle mixer and get it all homogenized and and then pour it into that mesh and see what happens. Yeah, this is really going to be a little bit too fine a mesh for, for what I'm trying to do right now. So I'm going to switch. I'm going to switch over to a kitchen strainer. And this is an old one, so the, the mesh is more like a porch screen, so it's pretty open. And it's letting all that nice clay liquid go through those finer particles. And it's leaving the, the heavier stuff, the dirt, and the heavier particles of sand and any of the organic stuff, any vines or roots or any of that and and leaving all of that in the in the strainer so I'm going to strain through the bucket the first go round and then I'm going to strain it one more time back into the original bucket and now it's back in the original bucket and I'm going to give it a stir and let it rest for another day or so. So it's been a couple more days and everything, I, you know, that part, like I said, part of figuring this out is what to strain, how to stir it up. Do I, do I stir it up? Do I, what, just trying to figure out how much of the original wild things I want to leave in the clay or strain out. So now I've got this 40 mesh, no, this is, yeah, this is 40 mesh and this is copper, just copper mesh that I bought. And I'm going to try and get some more of that um, sand and some of the, the bigger particles out to just have a little bit finer clay body, I hope. That's my intention anyway. So I've strained everything through the 40 mesh and now I think I'm ready to do the what everybody usually uses a pillowcase but I have a big piece of muslin here that I'm going to pour all of this nice clay liquid into and this is going to be the really slow part. This is where it's going to take several days for the water to drip out and leave leave the clay that'll be the magical part but it's going to take some time and I want to put a lid on it so the the big clamps didn't work and then I thought ah bulldog clamps that's that's the ticket those are those work really well hold everything in place and then I can sit the lid on top to keep critters and things from flying in
So this has been sitting for a couple of days and there's still a fair amount of liquid in it, but as you can see, it's definitely looking more like clay. And now it's time to, I'm going, this will, <laughs> this will take some doing, is to get the clamps off and grab all of this in, and hold it in place and try to get something to tie, tie onto it so that I can hang it up and let it dry. So it's not to mention that it's heavy, you know, so now I'm going to, I've got some torn strips of muslin that I'm tying around the, um, and then I'm going to, I'm going to hang it in the tree, you know, as I, I didn't really have a good place to hang things. And then I had this branch that was a good height and was relatively accessible. So now this is where it's going to sit and got everything <laughs> it looks very strange it looks like bowling balls hanging in the tree but it's that's where it's going to hang and now it's been hanging for a couple of days it's actually frozen and thawed and and uh, everything's con definitely congealed and I was doing two batches of this I had a friend give me some clay to try out and I was using hers and then also the clay that I dug out of my creek. Open up for the big reveal and lo and behold, wow, <laughs> it looks, it's clay, isn't, oh my goodness, this just feels like a miracle. It wedges like clay. This is the clay from my friend, and it has a really nice feel to it. I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. But I'm going to, now I've, I'm just going to let it rest for a bit longer. And let, it's still kind of sticky, so I'm going to wrap it back up in the muslin. And that's, um, that's my big pile that I did. So I'm, I'm wrapping both, both of the, the different types of clay up. And I'm just going to sit them on the log here and let them dry out for another for another day and see what happens see how see if it's a little bit more uh, more like clay and not so sticky so back to my original clay and you know it's it's mine's mine is still a little bit crumbly you know the uh, my friend's clay felt a more what is what we say is plastic in the, in the clay world so that it felt more usable and mine is still a little bit crumbly it's um, it's pretty good and as you can see here when I make a coil you know and I, I do that and and twist it around my finger it doesn't crack or crumble or anything but it, uh, when I try to make like a little pinch pot, just do a little thing, it, it really doesn't hold its shape very well. And it's still kind of, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's close, but it's, it's not as, it's not exactly what I want. So I'm going to wrap it all back up and I'm just going to leave it at this for now and keep it kind of damp. And I think my, so my next video is going to be amending the clay. I've decided to do some additives and try to make it a little bit more plastic and make it more usable for my hand-built clay projects. So that's that's going to be next. And the adventure continues. <laughs>